Welcome to the Hour of Empowerment. The show is designed to empower individual professionals, concerned citizens, business owners, community and organizational leaders, and change agents like yourself. The show provides you insights, tools, processes, interviews, and panel discussions. In the coming 12 months, we're going to have four seasons. The theme for the first season is personal development. The theme for the second season is civic education. The theme for the third season is organizational development. And the fourth season, leadership development. Under season one, we're going to have three topics. The first topic is the self-awakened personality. The second topic is visionary lifestyle. The third topic is living each day with a sense of urgency. We're going to have four episodes. The first episode covers background information, the significance and benefits of the self-awakened personality. The second episode provides you reality checks, self-assessments, and the third episode provides you processes, steps, and case studies of successful people. And the fourth episode brings to you an interviewee. We ask important and relevant questions so that you may learn from the life experience of the interviewee. Now, let me ask you a very important question. Why should we worry about self-awareness? You know, you're busy, I am busy, and why we should invest our scarce resources like time, finance, and energy onto self-awareness? Well, if you don't answer this question, I'm not sure even whether you finish this episode or whether you continue to watch the remaining three episodes. So it's very important to answer this question. You should be convinced that self-awareness is very important for your personal success and for your organization, community, and nation. Now, I have some reasons, but what do you think are the reasons why we should invest on self-awareness? Okay. Here is my first reason. In order for you to enjoy self-mastery, you should have self-discovery. Unless you first control yourself, master yourself, you can't really master situations around you. You can't really lead others. So it's very important first to have self-discovery. The second reason is when you become self-aware, you better relate, serve, and lead others. Now you know yourself. So it's very predictable. And also you know where to serve, whom to lead, and so on and so forth. The other reason is that once you know yourself, it is very easy for you to know your relative position among your communities, your organizations, and nations. And also, when you develop self-awareness, you develop a healthier self-esteem. You develop confidence. When you have self-awareness and then self-esteem, you have respect to others. Let me give you this interesting quote. There is overwhelming evidence that the higher the level of self-esteem, the more likely one will treat others with respect, kindness, and generosity. The next question is, what are some of the features of self-awakened individuals? What do you think are the characteristics of self-awakened individuals? Let me give you a couple of lists. The first feature of self-awakened individuals is self-awakened individuals know themselves very well. Not just their strengths, but their weaknesses too. Their blind spots, their flaws, and so on and so forth. Another feature is that self-awakened individuals are successful people. Watch around yourself. When you look around, you find successful people. And if you closely watch them, they are self-awakened individuals. 
when you become self-awake, you may become also a positive change agent. Self-awakened individuals around you, in your organization, in your community, and in your nation, they are positive change agents. They know first about the areas where they want to serve. They first change themselves, and they know how to help others change. Another feature of self-awakened individuals is self-awakened individuals work with others very, very well. Because they know that there are areas that are weak. They need the help of others. So they are great team players. Another feature is self-awakened individuals know how to bring the best from others. First of all, they bring their best out of themselves so they know and also help others to bring their best. Now, you may ask, where should I start in becoming self-awakened? Now, you have the reasons why you should invest on self-awareness. But the question then is, where you should start? Let me ask you, where? Let me give you my suggestions. First of all, we need to ask these three basic questions. Questions like, do I know myself well? Am I comfortable in my own skin? Do I know my surroundings well? But we should not stop there. We should ask some holistic self-awareness questions, critical, lifeless, philosophical questions, questions like who you really are, from where you have come from, what you should do with your life now, and where you should go from here. On top of that, you should also know your relative position in relation to other people, the environment, the universe. And you should have the understanding about what's going on around you locally, regionally, and globally. The problem is that sometimes we are preoccupied just to study ourselves, to understand ourselves. We don't give time to understand others. But it's very important. We should not leave this for psychologists, psychiatrists, or anthropologists. We should understand other people too. And also, mostly, we just leave the issue of environment to metrologists or biologists and, and so on and so forth. We don't really care about our environment, but our environment is the one that feeds us, that nurtures us. So we should know about our environment and we should give back to our environment. And also, this universe is a very harmonized and self-sustaining universe. You should be able to spot your unique position, and flow with the grand purpose of the universe. And also, you don't need to be a journalist, or a politician, or a consultant, or a business person to understand what is going on around you, regionally and globally, especially. This is a globalized world, and we are highly networked. So we can't really afford not to understand what is going on regionally and globally. What about self-awakened organizations? What kind of features self-awakened organizations that have individuals who are self-awakened demonstrate? Self-awakened organizations, they articulate their mission statement precisely. They develop clear brands for their organizations. They come up with a tagline that represents who they are. And also, self-awakened organizations and communities, it's very easy for them to align the people alongside their mission statement. Now, this is a very important question. Okay, we have seen that there are some reasons why we should invest on self-awareness. But what happens if we don't really care about self-awareness. What are the penalties? Here are some of the penalties we're going to pay. When we don't understand ourselves, we may buy into the opinions of others. It's very important. Let me give you a couple of 
examples. Let's take Haile Gabriel Selassie. What do you think people thought about Haile Gabriel Selassie when he was running to and from his school at the early stage of his profession? Do you think they, they gave him a lot of expectations? Do you think they expected him to become one day an iconic runner? Maybe not. Maybe some of the people even discouraged him. But Haile knew his potential, so he kept on running. And today, he is one of the iconic long-distance runners. What about Albert Einstein? He was told at the early stage of his schooling that he was dumb. Not only that, they told him that he wouldn't have any decent profession at all. But think about Albert Einstein. We quote him every day. He's the symbol of the highest form of intellectuality. What about Helen Keller? Disabilities didn't stop her. But what do you think people thought about her at the early stage of her life? Do you think they expected her to become one day a motivational person who motivates thousands and millions of people? I don't think so. But Helen Keller knew who she was, the potential she has within. She persisted against all odds. And finally, she became a very great author and political activist. And she inspired millions of people. What about Nelson Mandela? What do you think his jailers were thinking at the early stage of his sentencing? I don't think that they one day expected him to become the first democratically elected president of South Africa. I don't think. The same with you. People may have different opinion about you. Some of these opinions are good, some of them are not. So you need to know who you are. So you take those opinions that define you and reject those which do not represent you. But remember here, these people, these successful people I just mentioned, they were self-awakened. They invested their time. For example, Mandela, he was reading, reflecting, thinking, and also meditating while he was in jail. That's why he knew himself. He never put himself down. He persisted and finally became the president of South Africa. He could be able to make the transition smooth from minority rule of apartheid into a multicolored South Africa. My friend, you deserve to know who you are and impact the world using your strength, using your passion, using your potential. Another price we may pay is if we don't know our source, we can't really know what makes us great. Think about it. If you don't know your potential, how do you know how far you can go? You don't know. You don't know what makes you great. And also, if you don't know yourself very well, your fulfillment is not secured. Because you don't know your destiny. You don't know where you're going to finish your race. So it is impossible for you to know when you reach your destiny. Besides, if you don't know yourself, you are gambling with your life and the lives of others. You just buy into chances. You go out, try this one, try that one. If it works, you go. If it doesn't work, you just stop. But if you are self-awakened, you don't live your life for chance. Now let's talk about the benefits of self-awakened personality. What do you think are the benefits of self-awakened personality? Can you mention some of them? Let me give you some of the benefits. The first benefit is when you know yourself, you know your true self, your uniqueness, and your worth. Not only you know who you are, you you could also be able to know what you can achieve. You could be able to say more of I can than I can't. When you become self-aware, you become also self-aware the power that resides in you. Now, you're not just blood, flesh, bones. You are more than that. There is power in you. And once you know who you are 
and what is your source, you could be able to bring your best from within. Another benefit is that you become humble. Not only you know your strength, but also your weaknesses, flaws, and also blind spots. So you become humble. You also remain alarmed and alert. You will be able to easily understand when there are opportunities. And also you will discern and understand when there are threats, if you are self-awakened. You become productive, creative, and also cooperative. Because now you know your strengths, your passion, you only invest your time and your scarce resources on those things that you are passionate for. You, you are creative because you love what you do. You become cooperative because not only you know yourself, you also know the strength of others. Another benefit is you create synergy and focus. Now, once you know yourself, what you should do with your life and where you should go, now you bring people who can help you achieve that. You also create priorities and get focused. You also become wise. You don't need to be old to be wise. Once you discover a lot of truths, you become wise and reduce the number of mistakes you commit. The next topic is that what are the benefits communities enjoy when the majority of their people are self-awakened? We discussed about the benefits for individuals. What about communities? Let me give you a couple of lists. First, the collective self-awareness of that community increases. No country, no organization, no community can go above the self-awareness of its people. That means if the majority of the members of a given community are self-awakened, you can imagine the potential. You can imagine the things that community can achieve. And also, there will be a lot of cooperation and synergy in that kind of community. As the saying goes, birds of the same feather fly together. So people will find people who complement them. They work together toward this fulfillment. And also, people serve using their strength. Now, think about it. In a given community, there are a lot of people. And think about the productivity. If each and every member of that community serves based on their strength, Another benefit is it's very easy for members of such a community to choose the right path. They know what kind of education they should pursue. They know what kind of organization they should join or what kind of business they should open. And also, each member becomes a solution and contributor. You have members who provide solutions and contribute towards the success of their community. The next question is, why don't we have many people? We discussed that self-awareness is very important. We discussed that there are individual and organizational benefits. But why don't we see a lot of people who are self-awakened? Why? Why do you think? I think that it's very easy to follow the crowd. You know, once you have already tested paths, you don't want to create untested, risky path. You prefer to hang out with the crowd than having your own peculiar and destinative path. The second reason is that there are no incentives, except in a few cultures. In some cultures, people are encouraged, and they are given incentives. But in other cultures, when people try to be unique, they are discouraged. There are a lot of peer pressures. And also, there are cultural taboos and boundaries. So people don't want really to break away from such cultural boundaries and pay the prices. So they prefer to stay within the boundaries. They refrain from investing on their self-awareness and become unique and contribute 
to their community, to their organization, to, and to their nation according to their uniqueness. Now, some people are courageous enough to overcome peer pressures and cultural taboos, and they don't need incentives. But there are still challenges. Here are some of the challenges, real challenges. Self-awareness is not urgent. You can still eat, you can still dress, you can still walk around, live your life. There is no penalty at all if you don't discover who you truly are and your contribution to your community, your organization, and your nation. The second challenge is the status quo. Because you have known yourself for the last uh, two decades, or three decades, or four decades, or five, six, seven decades, so you don't want to really question the status quo. You prefer to just go along with who you think you are, what you should do with your life, without investing on self-awareness. Another challenge is the lack of consistency and discipline. You know, self-awareness requires you to think, to meditate, to read, and ask tough questions. So if you don't have the consistency and discipline, you can't really achieve holistic self-awareness. Another challenge is feeling the consequences of self-awareness. Now, you may be able to see some people who are living a miserable life. You know these people as readers, thinkers, seekers, but somehow they missed something. They are living a miserable life. They, they live a regretful life. And you don't want to really take that journey because you don't want to be like them. But the, the, the point is, these kind of people, they knew the truth. They knew about themselves. Now they can't really go back to their normal. It's over. They either pursue what they know or they live a miserable life. So don't look at such people. They just miss the opportunity to take action and risk. So it's not about the problem of self-awareness. It's about the people who know themselves, but they don't want to really live according to their uniqueness. They don't want to take risk. In conclusion, I would like you to know that self-awareness is very important for you, for your organization, and for your community. Not only that, it's also very important for your individual fulfillment and for the fulfillment of your community. Therefore, you should know who you are and your relative position in your communities, in your organizations, in your nations, and in the universe. This universe is a well synchronized, harmonious, and self-sustaining universe. Find out your specific spot and flow with it and enjoy life. Not only that, understand who you are and also the potential you have within yourself. Invest on your self-awareness by reading, by thinking, by meditating. If you do that, you will be one of the great world changers. You will serve your community, your organization, and your nation with your strength. Please don't die before you release your full potential. Don't slow down. Don't wait until everything is ready. Today is the day you should start this journey, this fulfilling journey. And Isat gave you this opportunity to investigate who you are and use this opportunity. So we have three episodes. So in the coming three episodes, bring your friends, sit together. For example, next week, we're going to provide you reality checks and assessment tools. You can use these tools and understand where you stand. Until I see you next week, thank you very much and thank you for watching. <music>